before you today a man who's somewhat of a controversial figure in the competitive beard community. <laughs> this, this Ow! Has taken it upon himself to lead Team USA to claim the trophy for the greatest competitive beer team in the world. Now, perhaps you followed him recently or in 2011, where he led Team US, Beer Team USA to a second place finish in the world, but unfortunately was not a, was not able to uh, top the Germans who were the defending champions. But he has made it his mission to spread the word of beer, facial growth, wisdom associated with that, and to ultimately reclaim the trophy for the Americans. So I'd like for everybody, if you could please start chanting with me, Beer Team USA. Beer Team USA. Beer Team USA. Beer Team USA. Beer Team Yes! Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. My name is Phil Olson. I'm the founder and self-appointed captain of Beard Team USA. <laughs> we represent America at the at international uh, and national facial hair competitions, including the World Beard and Mustache Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, we grow beards for America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ow. So many of you fine gentlemen, employees of what is it, Valley Technologies, yep. growing your beards for America too. <laughs> so I'm also delighted to be here this afternoon. Lost and Lauren invited me to come down and talk to you a little bit about the um, the sport of uh, competitive bearding, the um, international bearding scene, and uh, some of the some of the issues that may be confronting you as you grow your beards for America. So let me just start and give you a little bit of background. Um, I um, uh, wandered into the World Beard and Mustache Championships in Sweden in 1999, somewhat by accident. Luckily I had a beard at the time, but I walked in there and I saw, my God, there is such a thing as the World Beard and Mustache Championships. It's a great event. Uh, there's a, this, is a, this is a crazy thing. This is the best thing I've ever seen in the Olympics of facial hair. But America is underrepresented. So I undertook to do something about that and, uh, found, and ultimately founded Beard Team USA. Um, I brought the, nat the World Beard and Mustache Championships to, um, of all places, Carson City, Nevada in the year 2003. I remember that. We had um, 80, approximately 85 um, European beardsmen come over and visit us in Carson City on Nevada Day, by the way and an, approximately an equal number of Americans uh, who showed up to compete. Uh, and that was really the start of Beard Team USA because the European groups have all, all had their, their well-organized beard clubs. In particular, the Germans were the, by far the best organized. They had, first of all, created the sport, then made the rules, and then dominated the sport ever since its creation. And, um, so we had them over here, and we, we needed something to compete against them, and that's Beard Team USA. Um, we also brought the Worlds back to the United States in 2009 when the World Championships were held in Anchorage, Alaska. This was, of course, a very um, strategic move. We wanted to have it someplace in America that was geographically the most difficult place for the Germans <laughs> to get to <laughs> so that we could beat them, and indeed we did. <laughs> we beat them out by, I think it was two gold medals, and established the United States as the premier um, world power in the sport of international bearding. Uh, they did, the Germans came back, though, at the last Worlds, um, which were in Trondheim, Norway, a place that's a little bit tough for us to get to. I guess they could have chosen the North Pole, and uh, I don't know, we might have, <laughs> it might have been easier for us to get there, but we showed up. Unfortunately, the Germans beat us by, by one goal. So uh, we're looking forward to taking them on. This time it's on their home turf. Leinfelden Echterding in Germany, right near Stuttgart, on uh, November 2nd this year. But I'm hoping to, to put together a, a, a very, very strong squad of American beardsmen and head over there and, and show, them what we, show them what we've got. Um, we've also got, got the... Um, the National Beard and Mustache Championships, 
then uh, once again, um, we celebrated the national championships this past year in November on Veterans Day, and of all places, Las Vegas. It was a huge hit. We had 340 uh, competitors in 16 different categories, and uh, a big group of Germans came over, and they had a great time. Um, this year, the Nationals will be on September 7th in New Orleans, so um, everybody ought to plan on being there. It's going to be a great time. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking forward to, to uh, have, having, good, having, having great fun. Um, and for more information, just check beardteamusa.org. But anyway, September 7th, New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, um, Losh had some questions for me, and, and maybe some of you have some. A, a little bit, I, I guess I'm often asked for tips on beard growing and um, how, to, how to respond to people and, and so on. So if anybody, Losh, did you have something you'd like to say or ask? Or, yeah, well, what? Yeah, why don't we just open it up to the floor? Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, you said there were many different categories. What, what are the categories that you can do? Well, actually, the, um, in, the, the Germans invented the categories, of course, and, and, and so they made them, so they favored them. But anyway, um, there are uh, about 17 or 18 different categories, beginning with the, the uh, delicate dolly mustache, which is a tiny, tiny, skinny mustache that goes like this. Um, and, and it goes all the way up to full beard freestyle. Full beard freestyle is always the, um, the the crowd's favorite, and that's where these guys. This is an amazing thing. They take the they have very long, um, very luxuriant beards, and they actually mold and sculpt them into the craziest creations uh, you can ever imagine. Um, but there uh, there are a number of categories in between. My my the category I would fit into is is called Garibaldi which is a relatively long, full beard, rounded at the bottom. Um, then there's, most of you would be in the Verdi category. That's a shorter, full beard. Um, well, well, Ken, or, or Trim. And then there's all different kinds of mustaches and, and um, little pointed goatees and things. But um, it's always a great fun to see what, what people show up with. And I think the categories show that, that the, how creative you can be with your facial hair. And after all, you know, why not? We've got them, let's grow them. <laughs> let's show them what we've got. And then, and, you know, let's, uh, let, let, let's just see what we can do. Really, the, the World Championships, besides being an opportunity to drink beer and have a lot of fun, are uh, also, there are some people who are really serious about, think, about the belief that it's about, it, it's, it's about showing, um, furthering the art of beard growing or bearding and showing and, and improving the beards that are grown and showing what what we can do. Um, and that's what the categories show. Yes. What did you say some of the rules were? Like what are the standards for judging? Well, <clears throat> uh, at the national championships, the I'll, I'll describe the national championships. That's my event and um, you know I put a lot a lot into coming up uh, with with standards and so on. The judging criteria are um, that the judges are instructed to select the, the contestants whose facial hair best enhances their overall appearance, style, and personality. And that's really the only criteria. criteria. Um, the, once the, the contestants are put into the different categories, then it's simply uh, subjective. It's, what appeals most to the judges. And everybody's got a different opinion. Uh, it's just, but we pick the judges and then we decide and we go by the judges' decision. The, cat, the, the, the competitions are great fun. What we do is we have all the, the contestants in any given category come out. Each person's introduced to the audience. Um, and then they, then they line up in front of the judges and the judges have to choose um, who they like best for first place, second place, and third place. Each judge votes. A first, any first place vote is worth five points, a second place vote is worth three points, and a third place vote is worth one point. Whoever gets the most points wins. There, there are trophies or medals for first, second, and third. And it's great fun, it's a great, uh, it's a great spectator sport too. Yes? 
How much did genetics play into it? Because it seems like in Odyssey some beers are very full. And yeah. When you have some deficiencies. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> some of us do. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, genetics plays a role, no doubt about it. Um, uh, you know, some people can grow better beards than others. But what I do is I encourage everybody who can grow a beard to grow what they can, and then take a good look at it and see what best suits his own, his or her uh, <laughs> style and personality, and come up with, with, with something that works. And so even if you don't have the thickest beard, or there are patchy places, or um, you know, it just doesn't go the way you might want it to, I encourage people to just let it grow anyway, and then work with what you, what you can. But uh, uh, you know, everybody should everybody should be encouraged to try it out. But I'm speaking to the choir here. I can tell. <laughs> so, um, in your in your sport, is there uh, is, are steroids or PEDs? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, this is the, this is one sport. This is a this is a great sport because this is one sport where we um, we encourage the use of performance enhancing <laughs> And the only one I've ever discovered is beer, or at least uh, there, I've noticed that there's a, attending the European championships and, and some of the international events, I've noticed a, a high correlation between beer, beer, gro beard growing and beer drinking. So beer must have something to do with growing with beer. So we encourage, we encourage that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you guys handle the groupies? I mean, it must be just... Oh, my gosh, it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And, you know, you just have to... <laughs> Lodge, when you become a celebrity, it's just something that goes with the... <laughs> <laughs> you just have, to, you know, just have to, to, to put up with it. You know, they, they follow you around and, uh, and you know, want, 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 your, want your autograph and want your picture, but you just have to, you just have to suck it up. And that's the price of, of, of growing a beard for America. You just, have to, you just have to deal with the increased popularity. <laughs> so, yes, sir. How do you pick the judges? Well, um, for the National Beard and Mustache Championships, I pick the judges. So, um, and what's important to me is that the judges be, um, first of all, people who don't know any of the contestants. And I ask the judges to recuse themselves if, um, if they do know any of the contestants in a particular category. And uh, I try to get people who are um, who I can trust to be a fair and objective, and, and also people with a little bit of star power. Um, this last year we had um, Miss Nevada uh, who competed for Nevada in the Miss America Championships. Uh, the last couple of years, um, Justin Hartley, who was the the um, starting center for the uh, the. The Pittsburgh Steelers, when they won the Super Bowl in 2009, he's been a judge a couple of times. Uh, Adam Shorn, the style editor for the Los Angeles Times, was a judge at this uh, last event in, in Las Vegas. That's a good lineup. Um, I've had a couple friends who are Olympic skiers, um, <laughs> skiers, just partly because of the, the star power that they have with the Austrians and the Swiss. These are guys uh, I know from, from Tahoe who, um, who are household names in in the Alpine countries, so that the, the Europeans that have come have been delighted to meet them. Um, but um, we've also had an online essay writing contest, why I should be a judge at the National Beard and Mustache Championship, and you may have that uh, once again. So, uh, it, you know, if you, if you want to be a judge, just let me know, and I'll, I'll, re I'll, I'll, I'll review your qualifications. Oh. So, what's the most devastating thing that can happen during to a beer during a competition? During a competition, well, it's hard to say. I guess that I, I, obviously, if somebody came along and cut it off, that would be pretty bad. We know about the the incident with the Amish people who were attacked, savagely attacked, as by somebody who was anti anti beer. Really? It's yeah, this was a, a year or two ago. A year year and a half ago, I just wrote really mm -hmm. There was a that's a big, terrible. Um, um, scandal in Pennsylvania, I think, um, where uh, some um, um, some anti beer people actually uh, 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 attacked some Amish beardsmen and, and cut their beards off. So oh. that's the worst thing I could think of. Oh. Certainly, coming in second place. When you think you're best, it's, that's a little bit devastating for people, but uh, they usually seem to get over it in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah.
Did, yes, sir. Did your beards ever catch on fire during preparation grooming? <laughs> I <laughs> imagine it's happened. <laughs> Luckily, I've never had that experience. Um, that would de definitely be up there with um, uh, with things that would be devastating. I haven't heard of it happening, but it could happen. We did have, there was an event, and, and an incident one time where one guy from Germany, Billy Chevalier, who is many times the world champion in, in partial beard freestyle, who's, who shapes his beard like a triple curled mustache that's just this incredible creation. Robert on Google. from NPR, the, the uh, radio, called it a, a hair pretzel. <laughs> well, one year, actually it was the 2003 World Championships, uh, he was planning to come and defend his title. And um, about a month before the, the, the competition, he had a horrible accident where he was using a power tool of some sort, which got caught in, oh. got caught in a power drill of some kind. And all he said was, he felt this terrible, this terrible pain, and the next thing he knew, his whole beard was on the floor. And oh, so, uh, that would be that. That's that's. I guess I, you know. Let's let's all learn from that experience. <laughs> <laughs> Put, it, put it in a hairnet, 40. <laughs> Duties, yes, public sir. power tools. Other than the honor and prestige from fellow beardmen, yeah. is there any other thing that comes along with winning the, either the Nationals or the World? Well, you get a trophy. Um, yeah, no, it's mostly, it's bragging rights. Um, and actually, though, this year, well, we the crowd favorite got a 1000 bucks, And we've given cash prizes out at the Nationals before, but um, <coughs> it's uh, mostly, it's, it's trophies and so on, but bragging rights are, are incredible. Um, you know, we're hoping in the, in the years to come there will be, there will be uh, um, sponsorship opportunities and, and um, you know, maybe appearance fees and so on. I got, a, I got some pizza out of, out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, when you shape your beard, do you use scissors or like a, uh, one uh, of those electric razors? You know, I'm glad you asked that. Um, I um, I started growing this beard in 1998, kind of thing, and and um, I haven't shaved since since then. I don't shave my neck or anything. I just let it all grow, and nor do I generally trim it. Um, now and then, I mean, once a year maybe, I'll cut a little bit of it off because it's uneven or something. But what I do to get this effect. And this is going to sound weird to some of you, but you know, be open-minded about this. <laughs> because, um, I actually actually blow dry it when I get out of the shower. I mean, I, I shampoo it, I condition it, all that, and and I blow dry it, and then I use a, a men's unscented hairspray which I put on it, and then I shave it like this, and just try to get it into a nice form, try to get it, every hair in place, and and. Um, uh. What's that? How long? Yeah, how long? Five minutes a day. Or five minutes. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take any time at all. But I, I'm trying to uh, show the world that that just because you have a beard uh, it doesn't mean that. I mean, having a beard doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that you don't care about your appearance or that you're just somebody who's too lazy to shave. Um, too often, people think that that those of us who have beards have them because we're we're like people who who would prefer or would rather not brush their teeth or take a shower. We can't be bothered with shaving. It's a it's a sign of laziness. I'm trying to to uh, burst that stereotype and show that a beard can be can be cared for, uh, cared about, um, and and made into something that adds that enhances the person's appearance and, and personality. And I I I love having a beard. I've had it now as long as I like I said for a long time. I constantly get um, get compliments. Um, it's it's a, it's it's great for me as a way to um, to it, it breaks the ice in that people who are strangers will come up to me all the time and ask me about it or compliment me on it, and that leads to a more you know more interesting conversation very often. Um, I I mean I get I get comments all the time. They're a hundred percent positive. That's not to say everybody likes it, but those who don't like it tend to keep their comments to themselves. Um, another thing, maybe you guys have noticed as you've grown your beards, um, it it uh, 
it helps people it helps people remember you. I, I have the experience all the time now where somebody will walk up to me and say, Hey Phil, how's it going? And I have no clue who they are. I have no idea what their name is, where I met them or anything. And they only remember me because I have a beard. If I didn't have a beard I'd be nobody. <laughs> so uh, that's that's something something for me. Have you had, how about any of you? Have you had positive, negative responses? Um, experiences with your fear yeah. growing experiences? Always positive. Yeah, I've got to yeah. say, I just bought a car a couple weeks ago, yeah. and I got a lot of compliments on it from their financial people, and I really think I got a better deal. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, I, I like to think that going I, beards have certainly <laughs> become more and more popular. Um, I see it on TV. I see um, it on uh, professional athletes, um, movie stars. I mean, everywhere uh, beards are, are springing up. I personally, of course, take full credit for uh, how they started. But, uh, but it's definitely, it's de the world is definitely coming up. We are changing the world, and I hope that we can continue to change the world. Because, you know, when I was a kid, beards were for uh, uh, communists, um, weirdos, um, beatniks, and, uh, and other nuts. And there just weren't that many of those around. But now they're becoming more and more mainstream. And then my only problem is they'll become so mainstream that that um, you'll have to shave to distinguish yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I like where we're going with this. And um, it's great fun. And I want to congratulate all of you guys for, for growing your beards for the kids that you're, you're, you're um, they're part of your charity. And um, hope to hope you, you keep them going. Keep, so keep going. You, I hope you keep growing your beards for America, and then you'll come to the <laughs> national and world beard and mustache championships. Yeah. Uh, other questions, comments? Yeah. yeah. Give me uh, growth stimulation tips for kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ones that are still in puberty just have to be patient. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, but, you know, one thing about this, it's a, this, is the, this is the best sport there ever was for the couch of the day ever. Because to get involved in the sport, the first thing you do is nothing. <laughs> and, then, and then the next tip is to be patient. And so those who feel that they're politically challenged should just wait it out. That's all I can tell them because um, it might take longer than you hope, and you might think you look ridiculous for a while. But just give it, a, give it a chance, and 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 see what your potential is. But why not? You know, you, you only got one life to live. From my observation, we drink more German beer. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely true. Yeah, and, and yeah, drink a lot of beer. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then maybe just one final area, Bill, if we could touch on just yeah. just the how the television show oh. came about and what yeah. you see for the third season. Okay, <laughs> well, I, I don't know whether you people know it or not, but I am a I am a reality show TV star. In fact, I actually consider myself an icon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on a show called Whisker Wars. Whisker Wars is a um, a a, a, re a, a an unscripted reality TV show, um, it, which is about um, Beer Team USA and uh, the sport of competitive bearding. Uh, season one uh, came out about a year and a half, two years ago, and it's just recently been made available on Netflix. And it follows uh, various people to different beard and mustache com competitions and and and. Uh, culminates with our trip to Norway in 2011 for the World Championships. Season two was just shown in December in, or November and December, um, and it's still I think it's still being shown on a network called IFC, Independent Film Channel. Um, the I'm not in at season two. Um, I'm I, I was telling Wash before you know my experience with reality TV show with reality TV. It shouldn't surprise anyone, it's not real. Um, <laughs> and it's supposed to be an unscripted reality show. It's neither real nor, but it is, and it is script. It's not, it's not real and it is scripted. Um, the, the problem with it is, uh, from my point of view, is it focuses on a negative side of bearding, um, where bearding itself 
to me is very positive. You go, go to the World Beard and Mustache Championships, you'll find people from all over the world who are all equally crazy and equally fun, and <laughs> everybody has a great time. And there might be petty squabbles, but, but the overall spirit is, is one of a, a carnival. It's, all, it's about camaraderie, friendship, uh, understanding. But reality, a reality TV show, in order to make money, has to be about conflict. And so the show focuses on some conflict that, in my opinion, is, is contrived and unnecessary. But anyway, so it hasn't been a great, I mean, yeah, sure, it's fun to be a, a TV star. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, you know, watch the show, have fun with it, and, but realize it's not reality. What bearding is, a, is about friendship and camaraderie and not about the, 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 the insults and nasty, nastiness that, that, beca that become part of the show. So, but it's fun. Uh, yeah. say, have you ever run into anybody? It seems like everybody who does this is, you know, into it and very positive. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there are any assholes. Yeah. Oh, there are assholes. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and I could bring people in who would tell you that I'm an asshole. <laughs> so, but that's just how it is. Yeah. And so what, what, what's your question? Or, that was no, it. Just, no every, the, these competitions are great fun. It's terrific. Um, but there are, you know, there are squabbles over, over really silly things like, like definitions of categories. We had a, a huge um, uh, controversy leading up to this year's nationals over, over whether rubber bands were styling aids. Because in some of the categories, you can't use styling aids. And there's this one guy, he's from Las Vegas, he's incredible. His name's Kevin. He's got a goatee, I'm not kidding you, it's down to like his knees. But he wears it, he's always worn it this way. He puts rubber bands in about every few inches all the way down so that it stays together and you know and it works for him it looks great it's his own like i said his own personal style well there were a whole lot of people who thought that he shouldn't be allowed to compete in uh, a category um, that didn't permit styling aids and so the controversy was over ru whether rubber bands were styling aids and um let's face it that's pretty funny that anybody <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> about, about something like that and, most people do have a positive attitude, but it's surprising. I think the experience I've learned from, well, from being part of the World Beard and Mustache Championships and, um, you know, seeing what's happening, you know, or just being involved in it, I've come to realize that people, especially men, will compete about anything. And that's probably the, the lesson to learn. Um, that we're competitive by nature. That's what testosterone makes us do, and that's where our beards come from, too. So, <laughs> so what was the outcome? Was it his with the rubber bands <laughs> styling aids? Yeah, well, rubber bands are styling aids, and he competed in a, in a category, another category where um, styling aids were permitted. And guess what? He won. <laughs> so that everybody ended up happy. Yeah. That, that yeah. So yes, sir. So you've mentioned nationals a few times. Do you know of any states that do some kind of state competition? Well, you know what? There's actually there. Are, as a result of this and Whisker Wars in particular, there are now beard competitions that mirror the world championships that take place all the time, all over the country. Um, and if you go to beardteamusa.org, you can, you can see a schedule of, of upcoming events. I actually have to update that pretty soon, but there's, there, there are competitions all the time now. In fact, it's almost to the point where there, there are too many. Um, there's one there. There's one coming up in April, I think, in Sacramento. There's a group in Fresno that's going to put one on um, later this spring, and then there's one a big one in LA in June. So, um, but send me an email and I'll keep you in the loop on that. There's also a new group that just started in Las Vegas, and somebody wrote to me about starting a group in Reno. Um, and mm. Was it you? Mm. <laughs> it wasn't me, no. It'd be sweet though. But no, the, the big event is going to be in New Orleans in yeah. September. Just plan on coming there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're that would be gonna, super no, it's awesome. Be something. We're probably going to have television coverage. It's going to be responsible. Yeah. Yeah. You've been to Virginia City? I've been to Virginia There's City. There's some great beers there. There are some great beers there. Well, I've been to the, to the Nevada Day Beer Contest, which um, I have you guys been to? Have you been to that? Oh, well, Nevada Day in Carson City. After the big parade, there's always a beer contest on the on the uh, 
steps of the Capitol. And <laughs> one of the, 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 the big controversy, or the big, what everybody gets excited about is at the very end they see who, which is the most bearded city and <laughs> in, in Nevada, of course. And so everybody from different towns lines up. Reno is hardly ever, I never even see anybody from there, but the big, the big rivalry is between Carson City and Virginia City. And I think Virginia City usually wins. <laughs> and that, that goes by the number of beards that show up. So yeah, Virginia City is definitely involved. You're going to be in trouble. You guys are going to want to bogart all that here now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it. So. Yeah, more? Right. Both there are right. Any more questions? Uh,